So this is the second of our three of the session, uh, second talk of the three this session, this afternoon. Uh, our second speaker is uh, Halke Kurz from Surfsara. His title is now IRODs in Context, Exploring Integrations Between IRODs and Research Drive or Own Cloud. There you go. Thank you very much. You should press this one, right? Uh, yes. <coughs> Hi, can everybody hear me? Great. So my name is Hielke Koers. I'm the group leader for the data management services team at Surf Sara. Uh, you've heard already a little bit about our work uh, from the presentation of Arthur in the session before about the iARC or the iArthur client as we should rename it. Um, there's more work that we have been doing and I have the pleasure to talk a little bit about that in uh, this contribution. Um, I'll split my presentation in two parts. I'd like to begin with a little bit more of a general part, if you, if you like, um, talking just a little bit about service and organization and zooming in in particular about what we are doing to try and help our members with their research data management challenges. So talking about the service that we're developing, the roadmap that we're working on, and really sort of the, the approach that we're taking uh, to, to try and, and help uh, our, our, our customers, members of SURF, uh, to to uh, research data management in, in the best way possible. Then in the second half of my presentation, I want to zoom in on a piece of work that we've been working on recently and really zooming on one specific aspect of that, of that roadmap, which is exploring integrations between iRODs and Research Drive. And Research Drive is basically a product built on own cloud technology. I'm just wondering, can I see how many people are familiar with own cloud as a technology? Is that something people know? All right, mostly yes. I'm going to do a brief introduction about that, so if you don't know, that's then uh, don't worry. I'll, uh, I'll give a brief intro as well. And when I say that this is something we've been working on, really what I mean to say is that's something that uh, is mostly the work of Stefan Wolfsheimer, who is a developer in my team. As Arthur already mentioned, Stefan has an even better place to be than today because he's camping out somewhere in Norway on a well-deserved holiday, which is why uh, I'm doing this presentation. All right, but let me start with a really brief introduction of SURF. So SURF is the uh, collaborative organization for all things ICT in the world of education and research in the Netherlands. I think one way to explain it is we try to address the things that are better addressed together rather than everything apart when it comes to ICT. And that's quite diverse. So that's the network, um, but also uh, services like uh, we have a, a high performance computing center. Uh, HPC services, but also increasingly uh, paying attention to research data management in all its different dimensions. Service cooperation, our members are universities, univers uh, universities uh, medical centers, universities of applied sciences, and so on and so forth. Just to illustrate some of the research that is made possible by the services that SERF is offering, this is uh, something that came out earlier this year, the discovery of 300,000 new galaxies by LOFAR, which is a big radio telescope. Um, the storage of this, more than 20 petabyte, was done on the SURF data archive, also something that uh, Arthur already introduced. It's so really an example of uh, cutting edge astronomy meeting uh, cutting edge big data. And I think as SURF, we're really proud to have been able to support this piece of uh, research uh, through our infrastructure. So one of the nice things about my job is I go out and speak with institutes and people who work at universities and other research institutes quite a bit. Um, in particular, talking about you know, what are the challenges and the opportunities that they see around research data management. And I think I wanted to sort of pick out two main drivers that come back a lot of the time. First, I think more sort of bottom up, of course, more and more data uh, is being produced, is being analyzed. Research is getting more and more data intensive. On the other side of that, which perhaps is a bit more top-down, apart from more and more data, there's also a lot of attention and a lot of ambition around doing more around research data management. Open science, the FAIR data principles are all very much on the agenda of university leadership, of funders, and even to some extent at the political level. So there's this interesting dynamics of both top-down and, and bottom-up attention uh, towards re proper research data management which is giving really a lot of, uh, yeah, I would say, a sense of urgency and universities and other institutes are really keen to, to make progress there. That applies to the whole data life cycle. I think when I'm speaking with institutes, what I pick up mostly, I think, is a particular focus on the later aspects of the data life cycle, so uh, long-term preservation and publication, also because that is where the funders and, and university leadership is paying a lot of attention to. 
So in my team, to make sure that we're really focusing on value to the users and sort of keep us straight and, and not start to run away with technology solutions that we get very excited about without maybe knowing what it is that they do for the user. Uh, we always try to think about uh, personas. It's a bit of a methodology that we adopted. Um, so, so we try to sort of concept conceptualize uh, end users of our services and see if the things that we're developing, how that would fit their needs and would it work for them. So here's a few of the actors that I want to introduce to you. First one is Stefan, of course, named in honor of Stefan, who is uh, uh, our developer on holidays today. Um, he's your typical uh, computer savvy, uh, big data type of researcher. He's in bioinformatics, very happy at the command line, hates GUIs with a passion, very comfortable with I commands and that kind of stuff. Then there's Mara. She is quite the opposite. She works in social sciences. Um, just likes to work with sort of standard office tools and formats, SPSS, that kind of, that, uh, those kind of tools. Um, likes to work with graphical interfaces um, and is really comfortable at that. And then there's Ayub. Ayub is a data steward. And, and his job is to really make sure that everybody follows the right policies around research data management, uses the right tools. But also to make sure that he and, and the people in the university have a consistent view on what's happening with research data. So for Ayub, it's really so it's fine that Stefan and Mara use different tools, but at the end of the day, it needs to go into a common uh, archive or a common publication repository, and he needs to be able to preserve an integral view on what's happening in the in the university. So then, of course, for us, as, as sort of the challenge that we have is how, how do we go about to meet the, the, uh, uh, the needs of all these different actors, in particular in a context where yeah, there are many different institutes. Uh, we'll see that yeah, a lot of the needs that they have are in common. There's a lot of commonality in there. But equally, there's also a lot of yeah, uh, specificity, uh, customization, <laughs> integration that needs to be done because the individual contexts in all these institutes are different. So the way we're addressing it, sort of our mental framework is really trying to think about RDM services as modules in a common framework, such that if you're an institute, if you're one of SERF members, you can benefit from one of these modules in isolation, but also together. And if you piece all of these modules together, then you have more or less a full-fledged research data management platform. So of course, that's the Lego metaphor, making that a little bit more tangible. Um, this is sort of a sketch of how we see that framework. Of course, this is not really a proper architecture. My architectural friends uh, will get mad at me if I present something like this as an architecture. But it's really an illustration on how we think about this space and how we think about the different components that we're developing over time. So at the top, uh, interfaces. So a user interface for people who like to work with GUIs. Um, also more uh, computerized interfaces, if you like, for uh, setting up automated pipelines. In the middle, of course, is the uh, the central hub, if you like, the core facilities around research data management, metadata, persistent identifiers, provenance, data virtualization, sort of all of these core research data management components. Connected, of course, to the physical storage of the data. Then Ayub, as the data steward, can codify policies and metadata schemas into this data management hub. And it integrates with other tools, such as virtual research environments or data processing tools. And of course, also you can publish to a data repository if the data is in a state that it can be published. It will not surprise you that for the hub in the middle, of course, the technology that we're focusing on right now is IROD. We think that's very suited to be sort of playing that, that role as the orchestrator or the, uh, the hub of the middle. So that's sort of the, yeah, the, 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 the mental model, the, uh, the framework that, that we have in mind as we're building out several services, again, with, at the end of the day to help these institutes do better research data management. So looking a little bit at our roadmap, uh, some of the services that we're developing, and I'm trying to map them on that fuller framework. Um, th this is our first service that is actually live today. So you can contact Surf and you can purchase this service if you would like. It's a storage scale-out solution. Um, for institutes, for customers that are, are using IROTS already or have a research data management facility that, that is already working with IROTS and would like to benefit from additional storage at SURF. We have this data repository that uses TAPE, super cost effective, super flexible. Um, and this service really takes care of the integration between an IROTS installation and the SURF data repository and make it really easy for you to start benefiting, benefiting from that as a storage scale out solution. 
Another module that we're working on is really the thing in the middle. Um, so hosting IRODs as a service. So if you're a research institute and you want to work with IRODs uh, to, to, uh, to handle your research data management, but you don't want to develop that on-premise, also Surf is building, uh, working towards a proposition, a service for you to basically run uh, IRODs as a, as a platform, as a service type of proposition. That's not live today, but we're piloting and doing some uh, proof of concept with uh, some of our partners to really understand the details of what it takes to do this well. Also thinking about things like scalability and integration with user authentication and uh, those kind of complications. All right, now moving on to the third module, which is also going to be the bridge towards the second part of my presentation, uh, user interfaces. And of course, this is coming back to the user persona um, of, of Mara, who is the researcher who likes to work with graphical user interfaces. Um, of course, there already exist several user interfaces that you can connect with IROTS or that you can integrate with IROTS. Um, Yoda, of course, being one of them. We are in Yoda town today, so of course uh, that, uh, that should not be left unmentioned. Yeah. I'm thinking tomorrow we'll definitely hear more about, uh, about Yoda. There are alternatives as well, Metalinks, uh, some integrations with the Dataverse are around, CCAN, uh, but also uh, an integration with the Research Drive is something that we think might be of interest to our user base. So switching a little bit and really zooming in for the rest of my talk into that integration between IROTS and, and Research Drive and why we think that might be a good idea. So just to introduce it, Surf Research Drive is, um, is a tool um, that also plays in the research data management arena, but mostly for data that is still um, a bit earlier in the data lifecycle. It's basically a sync and share tool that as a researcher you can use it to put your data in. Um, you can connect it to various storage uh, resources and you can also share your data from that in a trusted way with your collaborators and of course access your data from various devices and various locations. It's, it's really sort of yeah, like a sync and share tool customized to meet the needs of, uh, of research data. Um, some other things that we've added to it that make it handy for research collaboration. Um, there are some data stewardship functionalities to make it easier for you to collaborate and also to have an administrative function that, takes, that can look into user quotas and that kind of stuff. And of course, this is the kind of tool that our persona, Mara, really likes. Um, and in fact, she might already be using it uh, just yeah, to take care of all those research data files that go with her research. Let me see if I can jump to a pre uh, demo bit. Is this still working? No with me. Here we are. So this is this is the branded version called Research Drive, but I'll do the demo in the non-branded version, which is own cloud, but it's largely the same technology. Um, so as you see, it's really what you would expect from a sync and share type of tool. This is the web interface into it. You can also connect it to your um, operating system through uh, WebDAV and, and, and other interfaces. Um, so let me show you how that works. So for example, if I'm a, I'm, I'm a researcher, I'm Mara, and I've done a bit of research, um, and I want to add that into this environment, I would create a folder. Let's say call that folder temperature data. So I've done a bit of research about the um, uh, temperature and how people perceive temperature in a room, which is a very urgent topic these days, especially in the Netherlands with the heat going up and the air conditioning is going like crazy. Uh, so I'll add the files that contain my data that I gathered for this project. So let's assume I have these two files. All right, and they are now in this folder which captures all the data of this particular research project. And from the own cloud interface, I can already do a couple of things like, um, I should do that here. And here's the details. I can share this with other people, for example, that I invite to um, make sure that we also, we, and my collaborators and, and me, that we always work on the same version of the data and can easily exchange the data in a safe way. It's a really brief glance at research drive or, or the, the on-cloud technology behind it. I'll go back to the slides and then pick it up to demonstrate the integration that we've done in a bit. So 
So Surf Research Drive um, is also being used today, so we have a bit of uh, we have some user feedback. Um, that we also have a similar product called Surf Drive, which is kind of the same technology, but not really geared towards research data, but more file sharing and, and file management in general. So we have quite a bit of feedback about that, and uh, what people tell us is they find it really quite suited for, you know, say, the earlier phases of the data lifecycle. Uh, to make sure they have all their data in one place with an easy UI to access it from various devices and to share and collaborate on the basis of it. However, there's also limitations. OnCloud, out of the box, does not have provisions to add metadata, and therefore, yeah, you're sort of blocked from, from, from more, more advanced or sort of core research data management facilities like data archival or publication or anything where you would typically want to have metadata associated to your data. So that's really the gap that we saw and they wanted to fill, and we saw yeah, potential play here to really benefit from the strength of uh, OwnCloud and the strength of iRots by integrating them together. So this is sort of the premise. We set out to see if we can extend this research drive um, functionality by integrating it with iRots. <coughs> For the user experience, what we wanted to achieve is that the user can just easily add metadata from the research drive environment so that if they are basically at the end of the research project and they still have that folder there, um, it's just really easy from the environment that they're already used to because that's what they did earlier on in their work um, to just add metadata and then go on and archive the data or publish the data really using the research drive interface as a jumping point. Behind the scenes, this is made possible because of an integration with iRods. Uh, we let iRods basically uh, manage the metadata, so the iRods iCAT is the source of truth of the metadata. It's, it's integrated with the research drive interface, but, but iRods maintains, uh, 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 maintains the metadata. Um, and also, iRods serves as this, um, this integration layer, if you like, to really ensure consistency between the user experiences of all these different actors. Yeah? So remember, there's uh, Stefan, the command line savvy researcher, there's Mara who wants to use the GUI, and there's Ayub who needs to be able to check into the data catalog to see what's happening. What we want to prevent is that these become sort of separate disparate systems, and, and uh, we're, we're using iRODS basically also as a consistency layer there. We're also using Apache Airflow as a way to basically do the workflow management for the data archival and data publication steps. And really what we yeah, set out to test with this demonstrator is can we combine these two services in such a way that we have happy, we have these three happy personas coming from those different perspectives, all really meeting their needs in the user interface that they are comfortable with. All right, so let me jump back to the demo. I think I need to change this one again. All right, so as you'll remember from the previous bit, um, the starting point is that I'm a researcher, Mara. I have analyzed some, uh, some temperature data. This is in this project folder called temp data. And now is the time that I want to archive this. So I'm sort of at the end of the analysis phase of my research, and now it's time to, to archive this. What I would do is the following. I select this folder, and I copy that. And now I move that into a folder called drop zone which behind the scenes, of course, is integrated with iRODS. I paste that over here. And now this is where some of the magic happens, because now there is a new menu item here that appears called metadata. This is not in OnCloud out of the box, so if you just install OnCloud, that's not there. That's part of the integration that we've done. So I click on metadata. Of course, this is the UI is not optimized, as you see, but it does make it very clear. Uh, so let's just call this a test submission. The creator here is say Mara. This is the temperature data. And I'm going to submit that, or I'm going to save it first, actually. Uh, the act of saving pushes the metadata into the iRODS iCAT. I submit it, which triggers this submission workflow. Let's see if that all works. All right, so far so good. And now I'm going to switch gears. So this is a different browser, and I'm now logged in as Ayub. And remember, Ayub is the data steward, and he also needs to do some quality checking of all the data sets that are submitted to this archive. 
So it's his job to really take a look and, and vet if this is okay to go into the, uh, the archive. So he looks into the submitted data queue. Now, fingers crossed that this is going to show up in a while. Here we go. So now this is in his queue of data that is submitted. Also, Ayub can take a look at the metadata. He basically has a choice of three. He can either reject it, which moves the whole data submission into the, the rejection bin. Um, he can approve it and revise, which basically pushes it back to Mara to make uh, changes. We're going to go with approve, because in view of the time, that seems like the right thing to do. So now Ayub, in his capacity as a data steward, has basically vetted that this data collection meets the criteria needed to go into the archive. And I'm going to switch back to Mara. And then all being well, in the archive folder, you will now see, in a bit, we will see this pop up. And here we go, there is the temp data folder. Behind the scenes, the data has been copied and the ACLs have changed. So Mara, as a researcher, is no longer able to make changes to this. That's by design. And once it's in the archive, we want it to be immutable. But of course, it can still be found either by searching on metadata through IROTS or an extension they were thinking about in the future to also um, introduce a search functionality at the, uh, in, in the, the own cloud layer. real brief about the technology stack. So it's a combination of own cloud technology, which we've extended by developing an app. Um, one of the benefits of own cloud, it, by design, it allows for these apps to be implemented. So it's also really quite modular. It's based on PHP. So we've developed this app that takes care of the metadata and the submission, um, basically the workflow management around this data archival workflow. Using our worlds for um, uh, to, the, the metadata, but also, of course, to, to maintain integrity of where all the data is stored at the end of the day, and using Apache Airflow for the basically the workflow and the process management around making sure that uh, all the actors are doing the right steps at the right time. What we've built now is the integration to the Surfsara data archive. Of course, other integrations at the end of the day that we're thinking about <coughs> is to hand over the data to a data repository, such as Dataverse or Figshare or, or uh, one, of, one of several others. But that's still work for the future. So let me summarize what we've been working on. And this is still early days, right? You will have seen the UI is very underdeveloped, but uh, it's a conscious choice. We thought it would be good to share it with you and get your feedback. Maybe here if people are working on similar things or if the whole concept resonates with you. Um, so it's really exploratory integration between research drive or own cloud as a technology and ROTS. Um, and really try and realize uh, as a benefit that researchers who want to use this intuitive, easy to use uh, graphical user interface can also make use of more well advanced or core RDM facilities like data archival or data publication. And doing that in such a way by connecting it with ROTS that you ensure consistency over all these different types of researchers, also those who are talking to IROTS through the command line directly. And still, yeah, you have a cohesive system and not uh, disconnected solutions. So next steps that we're working on, we want to do more user testing. We've pitched this to a few of our research drive institutional users. So far, they like the ID, but we haven't really tested it with researchers in, in, in their daily routine. Of course, all the code is still sort of pilot grade, in particular authentication authorization. Uh, we, want to, uh, we want to make much more robust um, uh, in the presentation from uh, Chinika earlier today, and there are some ideas about that that we're trying to, uh, to leverage. Um, and of course, thinking about not only data archival, but also publishing and, and triggering data publication workflows that would hand over the data to a data repository, such as the Serve Data Repository, B2Share, Dataverse, or the 4TU Data Center. Looking at you, uh, Susan. Um, and yeah, finally, still very exploratory, so your thoughts and feedback are very welcome. Thank you very much. We have a couple questions, one or two. Yes, here it comes. Everybody look. Hiya. Do you think it would work with Nextcloud as well rather than OwnCloud? 
Um, it's on our radar. So, so the question is, we're also looking into integration with the next cloud. It's on our radar, but we haven't looked at it in detail. And the reason for that is, is really quite straightforward. The choice has been made for research drive and serve drive to work with own cloud. So that's where we started. But I'm mindful that also the differences on a technology level should not be that great. So, uh, so potentially slowly, there's a... Slowly a, diverging, I think. So again? I think they're slowly diverging. Yeah. So if we want to also look at that, we better do it sooner rather than later, I guess. All right. So I have a question about the PHP. Is that because own cloud is, is a PHP situation? Yep. OK. Because I haven't seen an integration with PHP show up in a few years. Did you have any trouble with it? Uh, yeah, some. Because <laughs> we haven't touched it in years. Yeah. But uh, I mean, yeah, some. Uh, always when you make, do these integrations, you run into challenges. OK. And this was no exception. I don't think anything that was like particularly big or unexpected. Excellent. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. Hold on a second. Wait, wait you got to double, double throw it. Oh, I didn't know that. He said Yoda and all the other things. So I'm just out of, t out of touch. So PHP works. That's great. Wonderful. Oh, yes. You changed it. You made it better. Even better. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? There's this, this IRLS PHP API, which I think you guys also contributed to, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you again. You're welcome.